Welcome to the double shot uh, with your favourite cousins James I and Alex Fitzgerald. It. Oh, mama! No intro. That that was so I can I can be the person who kickstarts this because you always kickstart the podcast. Thought I'm gonna have to cheat here and uh, and, and get away in. Cousy, as long as you bring that energy that's, you know, three protein shakes, a couple of monsters and seven Red Bulls deep, you can do the intro any damn time you like. Hey, uh, Soccer World Cup in full swing over in Doha. Doha, I actually went through Doha to get to Europe when Stop I it. did my trip. Yeah. Did you? Very, very nice airport, actually. Mm. Hey, could, Qatar has invested a lot of money in bringing that there, No. I, th- I, don't know. I actually think, don't know the numbers, but uh, it's pretty I th- impressive. I think I read $450 billion. Oh, it's well, a lot of money. You know, well, you know, I mean, if you're going to spend $450 billion, may as well do it for the Soccer World Cup. They've also actually, we the reason I went to Israel a couple of weeks ago is to go to that Global Wellness Summit, as mm. you may have heard me talk about, and they announced that the summit next year is also in Doha. So I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe they're just trying to attract a lot of these big conferences, bring everyone out there, show them how great the place is, and the Soccer World Cup is no exception. Cause, Tell you what, and take, no, take, a bit of kang, take a bit of kanga with you. Take a bit of cash because not cheap, Daha. Uh, huh? Well, Certainly how else the are they going to make their 450 bill back? Have a guess what a small flat white extra shot cost me. Once converted back into AUD? Yeah. Okay, uh, $11.50. $14.50. Oh, my days, no. You didn't even get the funky milk. I just done a 14-hour uh, one-leg flight over there yeah. without sleeping. Yeah. So they could have charged <laughs> me 50 and I probably still would have paid it. I, I agree. I but agree. Was like, it any good? It's Was like it hundred and it's like 120 20 of their currency, so i got no idea what it costs. <laughs> it wasn't until I thought 120. I uh, don't know what that is, whether it's good or bad. Yeah, And check right. my bank account. $14.50? What the? <laughs> Anyway. Was it any good though? Was it any good? It wasn't too bad. Yeah, it wasn't okay. too bad. Yeah. Okay. Look, desperate times was calls it? for desperate measures. <laughs> Unless I'd been on a twelve-hour flight, I don't think I would have justified fourteen fifty for it. But yeah, <laughs> nice, nice coffee nonetheless. Hey, um, uh, have you watched any of it? No, absolutely nah. nothing. Absolutely nothing. As no. we re- as we record, Australia have just gotten done four one oh, by oh. France, and oh, uh, that's why you were late. Yeah, okay. no, no. Well, no, I was, I was late because I, I actually flew back from um, Sydney this morning, oh. but uh, I, I was watching it in the lounge. And uh, Australia got off to a one nil start, and I thought, "How good's that? this? We're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna beat France." But then I've landed, and we lost four one. <laughs> oh dear! Half asleep in the morning watching the World Cup. Yeah. In the lounge, how good? Over a flat white, nonetheless, just not that the actual the free kind. Yeah. The complete antithesis of what you paid. In Doha, because you know what I realised the other day? We're a couple of weeks away from my favourite cousin of the year. That's December 1, cousin, and yep. that's you listening to Michael Bublé, Mariah Carey, and every Wham track, but notably the Christmas ones, one, uh, from December 1. I know that you, my friend, do not waste a second come December the 1st. How are you feeling? I've actually just you know you know how you you've on Spotify oh you, you use Apple Play but I'm sure it's the no, same. No 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 I use Spotify cars. Oh, oh okay. Please come on don't embarrass me in front of the people. <laughs> you Jeez. were you were Apple for a long time. You yeah were Apple like music five years a, ago. Okay anyway mm. um the, the thanks for noticing. You have the spot the uh, Spotify playlist that you can download and, and listen to it when you don't have Wi-Fi. Christmas one just put it on the downloaded. <laughs> don't need Wi-Fi. <laughs> Is it a 2022 playlist? Is it recent or is it classics? It gets updated every year. But no, it's a, it's a collection of guy. I, tr- I traverse many, many eras uh, in this one. I've got Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra all the way through to Ariana Grande on that bad boy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm impressed. I'm impressed by that. I didn't think you were a kicking it, kicking it an old school kind of guy, but they are Christmas tunes, I love, and I, I look Christmas. forward to seeing that Christmas cousin. Christmas cousin in a couple of weeks. Love Christmas, and uh, and and by the way, uh, I know we we need to get into a fair. We've got a fair bit to discuss, but um, basket brigade, their emails, the Brisbane basket brigade's emails are, are needing a, a revamp. Can you talk to your connections? Okay, I will. Because it's impossible to book yourself in to drive which is the hardest one for them to fill. It I don't is. understand. I, uh, is that what you want to do? You just want to do some well, deliveries? I sent you the email. And, some good uh, Samaritans. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't do the packing because the packing is always that it fills up pretty quickly. They need drivers. They've never got enough drivers. 
Always, always. So and I'll put out, a word into Rachel. Put a word into Rachel. Send out their annual email and yeah. you could do everything except register to drive. Well, maybe they do that separately. I'll put in a note for you, Cassie. I'll put in a note. Now, you travelled this morning, you came back from Sydney, you leisured in the lounge, and you're bringing the stat fact of today because it's a business travel stat fact. It's very relevant that you, in fact, execute the stinger. Hit the stinger, Sammy. Stat. Stat fact. The stat man. Stat fact. Doing well, Sammy. Don't worry. Okay, the stat fact is this. (laughs) Uh, Business travel in the month of August got back to 92% of Mm. its pre-pandemic levels, which is pretty impressive. So we're pretty much flying almost, you know, exactly the same amount as we were all the way back in 2019 before the pandemic. Uh, And the Australian Government Tourism Research Australia say that that will be adding $1.9 billion. Uh, In fact, sorry, we will be spending as a result $1.9 billion more than we were before the pandemic because ah. because costs have increased. You know, and, and that's interesting too because I'm not sure where we're at in terms of how many flights we have today as a percentage of, of pre-pandemic, but the biggest increase uh, that I read has been 64% in Queensland and 51% um, in South Australia. That's up on the tourism spending. So it, it yeah. looks like definitely more activity in Queensland and, and SA and I feel like Sometimes they write these stats about me because they're they're the two places that I often float to. Well, and and it um, it actually did coincide with a, and it's not the stat fact. I've mo- moved on from the stat fact now. But oh my! Oh, it okay. did coincide with uh, another bit of data that came out during the week from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Mm. Every every month they talk about overseas arrivals. So overseas arrivals that are arriving long term and yes. then short term. And uh-huh. the overseas arrivals in the month of August and September have hit 40,000 people every month that are Ooh. moving here permanently. Oh, finally. Yeah. Now, to put uh. that in perspective, that number was 40,000 before the pandemic. So we are back to overseas migration levels on a month-by-month <sighs> basis that Brilliant. we were at before the pandemic, but it's only been for the last two months. Prior to that and pretty much all the way through COVID, it was like 2000 per month. Mm. And so now we're finally seeing it. Hey, that's that should have been the stat fact. That's very good. And, then, good and then the short term, this this one's probably the one that we'll notice the most. Now you're showing off. In now the next, you're showing off. In the next few months is short-term arrivals, people who come on holiday from overseas. Yeah. Mm. That's up to 400,000 per month, and that's been growing, growing by pretty much 50,000 every month uh, since July. Uh, now, before the pandemic, that number was 700,000. So we're still not quite where we were before the pandemic, but it is well up on 2,000 per month this time last year. You got to love those numbers. Good numbers for the hotels. All right, so because as borders open up, we need somewhere for these people to live. Oh. Uh, and, and as such, that is why the government, uh, what was it, a few months ago said, big, bold goal, we're going to build a million homes in five years to cater for the growing population and, and uh, reopening of borders. You got a bit of numbers and, and data for us from the housing institutes, uh, which obviously are looking at, well, great, that's the goal. Can we mm. do it, though? What are they saying? That that's always the question, you know. Big audacious goals, we love those. Million in five years, so we need to, we need to build a million a million houses between now and twenty twenty eight. And basically, what what's happened here with the HA is that uh, in the latest set of quarterly forecasts, the the big big boys, the big volume builders, have basically come out and said that yeah, we're on track to do about 965,000. So look, a little bit short off a mil, but, you know, maybe maybe we can fill a few gaps there um, between now and 2028. But they've obviously put a little bit of a contingency around that and said, if rates keep going up and your benchmark rate, your interest rates are, you know, relatively high, that could have quite an effect on this. Um, so we're in a bit of an, it's an interesting predicament. So detached housing starts likely to drop down to about 101,000. So site starts by about 2025 and then sort of, you know, pick up from there, which means we're going to have a lot of making up to do. 
Um, but don't forget, then there's also we're going to need that massive gap fill of those attached dwellings. So we're talking about your apartments, your townhouses, your sort of units and flats and, and stuff like that. So interestingly, it can be done, but there's many different factors that, you know, could could really halt us back from achieving that. Yeah, interest rates, interest rates going up. Interest, interest rates going, going up at the up worst the possible worst time. time. That's exactly right. Sorry, I've just knocked out my. Uh, can you hear? Yeah, me? yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you, we go. There she your, is. Your audio, your audio went a bit Barry. scratchy there. So apologies to the listeners, but that's sorry, okay. I, I knocked it. I knocked out some some key chords. Some key chords. It was so all your gesticulating, all your passion. Yeah, that's right. I've my Italian hands with I've not a <laughs> shed of Italian in my body, I know, because I did the red, the, the 23 in me. Anyway, we get off track there. Um, basically, they, they, they need to go hard and the interest rates, they're not helping. No surprises there. But you got to remember, like, there's always so many external factors. We've got these big audacious goals, but, you know, we have to be thinking about how interest rates can impact us getting there and, of course, how that the flow on effect of that for affordability uh, and also vacancies, you know, for people to be able to find somewhere to live with, as you mentioned earlier, because you're, what, are 40,000 people uh, well, moving yeah, everyone, here? Everyone who buys needs finance and, and the developers need finance. So interest rates has Investors a Investors need finance. Owner, big impact. We all do. Yep. Yep, and it comes at a, at a pretty critical time because we have uh, also had the vacancy rates come out last week and they went down again. So the oi, vacancy oi. rate across Australia. Makes sense, makes sense. Vacancy rate across Australia down to 1%, which was down from uh, September's 1.1%. So obviously this is the October data and uh, quite a way down from 1.9%, which is where the vacancy rate sat this time last year. So nearly halved in the space of 12 months, most critically felt in Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth, where mm-hmm. the rate sits at less than 1%. Mm-hmm. Jeez, that's low. That is so, I mean, like I, I always try to put into a little bit of context vacancy rates, and I know it'll be oversimplified for some, but you know, that, that means in every 100 properties, there's maybe one on the market for rent. Um, mm. Or, you know, in a 1,000, there's, you know, maybe eight. Um, mm. That's that's critically low. And you got to remember, for, for those that have secured uh, tenancy, they're not going to let that thing go. So it's a, it's a really tough time for tenants at the moment and really echoes the necessity of maybe, you know, the interest rates sort of staying where they are or, mm. I don't know, heaven forbid, coming, coming back down next year. I don't want to jinx us um, to sort of open that, up, open that supply up, as you said, not just for the, the investors and the owner rocks, but also the developers that are funding these projects. Yes, and, and well, what it means is so rent, rent, rental data, rents are up 10%, but if you look a layer deeper, the asking rents, which is a little bit more of a real-time barometer, yep. asking rents across all of the capital cities in Australia, so capital cities as different from the whole of the country, up 24%. And we're up two percent uh, for the month of uh, of October. So, uh, what it says to me is we're seeing now, a, a, in fact, an acceleration in rental uh, prices mm. going up by call it two percent per month in terms of what people are asking. Asking rents are typically a more real live t- live um, uh, real time uh, feedback loop on what rents are doing because it's what the agents think they can get away with. Mm. Right. Whereas mm. the actuals, there's a bit of a lag. Sort of, you know, there's often rental True. increases built in, etc. I wouldn't be surprised if we're seeing the forty thousand that are now coming in every single month from overseas to permanently live here. Mm. They're starting to push the rental market because no one who oh, moves yeah. here from overseas immediately buys. They rent in the first sort of twelve, twenty four months. So, you know. For me, what it what it can mean, and obviously we've got to be careful because it, it could be it's it's really tough for tenants, uh, but for investors and and people who do own real estate, I wouldn't be surprised if we see this start to translate into another price movement in twelve eighteen months time, mm. once the Reserve Bank has sort of settled things down and 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 normalised their interest rates. 
Mm. And that, that's why it's always important to look, you know, beyond uh, what you can see, you know, right in front of your feet right now in terms of rates and like what's going to happen next month. You know, we've got to look at the bigger picture always. And that's, you know, what's actually going to happen next year when uh, more and more migrants start to come over, etc. Because if I can shift over uh, to the other side of that where people might look at like seriously look at buying because they can't rent, which mm. is actually quite an interesting uh, position to be in. Um where we're also looking at a lot of a lot of pre-COVID numbers are coming out as a bit of a benchmark uh, as at today because you know everyone's saying everything's fallen off, slowed down. You know the word the recession word keeps getting thrown around. So domains come out and they've sort of shared their uh, data for houses on the market uh, in a like in the form of days. So how many days uh, mm. the average house is is on the market. So they've actually said every city except Hobart uh, has a number of days less on the market today, or sorry, in August of this year, than they did in May 2020. Now, that's kind of an interesting time to compare next to. But remember, interest rates were still extremely low in May 2020. And we had a lot of time to look on domain.com, realestate.com. But in Sydney, the number of days, uh, average days on the market in August this year was 48. In May 2020, it was 63 days. Melbourne, uh, it's dropped to 51 days on the market compared to 56 in May 2020. But this one's in, like quite incredible. Brisbane, the time frame is less than half. So today, average property spends about 41 days on the market. In May mm. 2020, 94, so less than half. Um, and then, I mean, I think you've even put this note in here, the Queensland's fastest selling suburbs are uh, are pretty much all in the the nine out of the top ten fastest selling suburbs, I should say, are in Queensland, mm. and I quite liked one of those, uh, Sunnybank. Yeah, yeah, got one of yours in there. I, th- I knew you'd like that. Um, what it says to me is there's no one who's distressed today. There's probably, if anything, a lot of people just sitting on their hands. Otherwise, you'd see a rush of listings to the market, and they'd be taking a lot longer to sell. I mean, you know, I don't want the renters to yell at us uh, whilst they're driving in their car because I think the renters might be a little bit distressed. But you're saying there's no distress. Homeowners, sorry, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Hey, uh, a bit of positive news then. Let's. You're right. <sighs> that was that was some bad news in there for some people, but some good news for others, uh, and some more good news. Sorry, Wages are going up. Wages have increased oh. by one percent over kind of the last news. quarter. So that would be an annualised rate of 4%, uh, up 3% for the year, which if that doesn't quite make sense to you, what's happened is we're seeing wages increase by more and more. So 1% in the last quarter, not as much growth in the previous three, so only 3% for the year. Uh, but 1%, if it keeps going, would be 4% per annum, which is handy. Certainly offsets the rising interest costs and rents or part of Mm. And because if, if I can shift over a little bit too, uh, let's let's sort of maybe we'll talk about the US inflation and that actually having slowed down, which for us over here in Australia is a bit of a welcomed change in a way because the Reserve Bank of Australia often looks to inflation in the US um, and then I don't know, uses it as a factor um, mm. of where we have our interest rates sit so that, you know, our dollar can sit quite low relative. Um, so, you know, a good thing for us that a U.S. inflation has slowed down? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the U.S. inflation and the U.S. interest rates were ahead of Australia. So they, they started getting uh, decent inflation a few months before us. Their interest rates started getting increased a few months before us. Uh, so they're now seeing that they've hit the top of the curve of their inflation. It, it got up to about 10%. It's now down to about 65 and coming back. So I think, you know, that is very good news for Australia because it probably gives us a bit of a window into the future. They've had higher inflation than us, uh, but we've actually had higher, higher uh, interest rate increases in a, in a short time. So I dare say we, like them, would be nearing the end of uh, this runaway inflation, which good news for interest rates uh, or, or borrowers rather because probably just means we'll start to see an end to the interest rate increases over the next few months. 
All right, Kaz, I reckon we might uh, traverse through a few uh, companies and how they're doing. Always interesting to see what Ooh. companies are doing well and which companies might be struggling a little bit at the moment. I'm going to start us off with Origin. Origin, the big energy company in Australia, uh, yeah. uh, had yeah. an offer of $18.4 billion to buy them from Brookfield and EIG. Uh, I think Brookfield's a Canadian pension fund and EIG, uh, some sort of consortium that are really making a push with energy companies uh, and renewables, et cetera. To put that in perspective, the Origin shares were trading at about $5.70 before the offer and have received an offer of 9 bucks a share, which they have accepted. So 9 bucks a share on a price of $5.70. Good result if you're a shareholder in Origin, I think. They are some crazy numbers, cuz. A good day, a good day to be a shareholder in Origin. Now, if I may share a hooray, mm. if you, well, a hooray in terms of like a, a good story. Flight Centre. Boy, did they get smashed in the pandy. Uh, understandably, travel company, not a good time when everyone's locked up. But basically, travel retailer Flight Centre has returned to profit for the first four months of the financial year. That is this year, my friends. Um, with a half-year f- profit forecast between 70 and $90 million. Thank God they're in the green. Or the black, you know, it's not the red anymore. But interestingly, some equities analysts were a little bit disappointed. They were expecting bigger numbers as the big bounce back. I mean, you know, maybe the the airlines have a little bit to say about that with their prices extremely high. But basically the result for the period to end October 31, total transaction values rose 246% to $6.8 billion compared to last financial year. That's a good story. That's a hooray. That is a hooray. And uh, and it, uh, I think we were talking about something similar with Lyft last week where they yes. almost get penalised because of the expectations that are placed on them. Tough no. gig as a public company, isn't it? Seriously, tough gig. Who wants them? Who needs them? A side, side note, I actually <laughs> sacked uh, so the guy who started Flight Centre, Graham Turner, oh. Graham yeah. Screw Turner, uh, sat next to him at a cafe when I was waiting for my Noosa triathlon to start. He's... Uh, was saying that it's his like twentieth time that he's done the triathlon up there. Um, so good to see. He's like I don't I don't know how old he is, but he'd be you know getting on on a little bit and uh, still doing triathlons. The great man. Cause cause good for you talking to strangers because it's actually very good for you. As That's you true. Have previously alluded. You it's are an expert salt. at that. You are an expert at that. Hey, and uh, Fraser's Pest. one to round it out. Fraser's a massive, uh, I think, Singaporean-based uh, company with a, with a massive business in Australia. Uh, they've produced their reports as well. Revenue, a little bit down, 40% down, in fact, albeit they've still made nearly $600 million worth of sales in the last year. I mean, you mean like Fraser's has had sales of about 1,600 units during the 12 months of the end of September, um, and then they've gone and bought more stock and replenished their land bank in, in Queensland. In a suburb, because I've never heard of New Beef. Yeah, it's like um, Jim Boomba way. Ah, there you mm. go. So, I mean, you know, you, you wonder if they've uh, probably been hit a little bit by the interest rates, probably selling a little bit less, but again, coming off a, a whopper. Um they- they did say to 2,500 contracts on foot at the start of the financial year, the exact same amount as this time last year. And they did, even wow. though their revenues were down, they did make a profit of uh, uh, 81 million, which was up by about a third, but said it was because they sold some land, some big developments throughout mm-hmm. the year to other developers. So, See, some mixed results very for similar to Flight Center. Very similar to Flight Center. Very similar, very similar. Hey, uh, that'll probably. Uh, do us. Um, tell Probably me, us. Uh, I did forget to ask. You oh. went to New Zealand over the weekend for a wedding. Quick in <sighs> and out. How was it? I, I, it was sensational. I wish I'd stayed for longer. I went to Matakana, uh, up north of Auckland, maybe about an hour. Absolutely stunning. I went to an incredible wedding. Uh, nice. No dollar was spared at this wedding, and I sat on a table of legends, which... They were strangers, but by the end of the night, new best friends. New best friends, maybe even 
business associates. You just never know. You know? <laughs> I feel like I'd expect nothing less from you going to a <laughs> wedding, to be perfectly honest. I, you know what? They, we got sat on a table and we're thinking, who are they going to sit us with? We really don't know anybody here. And we got sat on the Australian table. <laughs> Everyone was Kiwi except Team our Australia. table. <laughs> yeah. Sit down or cocktail? No, sit down. Very formal, uh, very bougie, very sophisticated, which is a word that I cannot even spell. But I loved it. I loved every minute of it. And I want to go back to Auckland, Toronto. Who's coming? Who's coming over? All right, that'll pretty much do us. What have we got? Maybe only two or three (sighs) more for the year. We'll do quick shots later uh, in the week, so keep an eye out for that. And if you've got anything that you want us to talk about, or you've got a question, of course, hit us up. Our uh, emails are always in the show notes. Have a great week. See you later. Well, you know, it's in the middle of the week now. Hope you've had a great week. Have the best weekend. Have a good rest of the week. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Double Shot with your favourite cousins, Alex and James Fitzgerald. If you've got a burning question or something we absolutely need to talk about on the pod, please write to us. Both of our emails are in the show notes. For little real estate tidbits and a little bit of banter, okay, a lot of banter, you can follow us on the gram. Our handle is the double shot dot podcast. That, my friends, is the double shot dot podcast. Until next time, think of us when you sit back and sip your next double shot.